Today, we're going to learn how to download and install MicroPython libraries over Wi-Fi with MicroPIP on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. MicroPython is an exciting language to use on boards like the ESP32 or the ESP8266, but it doesn't always include the libraries that you'll need for a particular project. MicroPIP solves this by allowing you to connect to Wi-Fi and download any library in the standard MicroPython library. And that's really useful if you have a project that needs another library and don't want to go through the tedious process of trying to load it yourself. Now to use this, you'll need a D1 Mini or a ESP8266 based board like a Node MCU. And you can also pick up an ESP32 based board because they both support MicroPython. Now if you want to find more information on these, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. Once you have these, you'll need to load MicroPython, so you will need a computer with access to Wi-Fi so you'll be able to download the MicroPython binary. After that, you'll just need a cable to connect this to your computer, and then we're ready to begin. To get started with MicroPIP, we're going to need to overcome a couple initial obstacles in order to actually download the packages we want to install. Now, one of them is, out of the box, we don't have a network connection. So first, before we even start exploring MicroPIP, we're going to need to make sure we have good connectivity and go into the network module and connect to Wi-Fi first. Here, though, we can see a little bit more information about MicroPython's PIP package manager. You can see that the actual installation is pretty easy. Once we do get Wi-Fi, we just need to import PIP, and then we can pretty much do a upip.install any sort of package that we want. Now, our goal today is just to install a simple benchmarking library, although we can, of course, go ahead and do anything else in the pretty expansive MicroPython library that's uh, provided at this URL. So you can see that the number of different uh, things that are provided here are pretty expansive, and you can go ahead and import any of these that you want. I won't go through all of them, but you can refer to the github.com slash micropython slash micropython lib github in order to go through all the available options yourself. Although just standing out, I can see some obvious ones that I've used before, like URL lib and base64. All these are super useful when you're developing code on a small microcontroller. All right, so now to get started, our first step is actually going to be network basics. So we're going to need to first connect to our microcontroller and then over Wi-Fi be able to connect so that we can download the libraries. So first, we're going to need to find our microcontroller. Now it's plugged into my system, but first I'll need to find it with, on a macOS computer anyway, I'll make this a little bit bigger, ls slash dev slash su star. We can see it's connected here, and usually the one that has a W in front of the CH USB serial is uh, the one that's correct to use. We can type screen the correct port and then 115200 for the baud rate and you can also use other tools like putty or picocom to do this as well all right so we're connected to micropython so the first thing we're going to do is import network now there's one thing you can't do and that is use the web repl in order to set this up and while the web repl is really cool and allows you to connect to micropython without actually needing to have any wires connected it also won't work for this because we're going to have to turn on the wireless interface and connect it to a separate network. So we wouldn't be able to connect to it directly after all. So first we're gonna go ahead and set up our network interface. So we can run these two commands in order to make sure that our station is activated. And then we can also go ahead and run our station if active check to see if it has been successfully raised. So as you can see, it is not currently activated. It's not connected to anything. So in order to do that, we're going to need to basically run the same command, but this time just pass the true argument, if we spell it right. All right, so now our station should be active, and we should be ready to actually attempt to connect it to a wireless network. And this is where we can go ahead and copy this command, which is station if dot connect, and then we'll need to pass in the wireless network name and the wireless password. So we'll go ahead and paste this, and I'll have the network name, the control, and the password, something super secure like password123. And then I'll go ahead and run this. And after a second, 
I should be able to confirm that I'm connected by running the station if is connected command. So when I run that, you can see it now reports true. And if I really want to confirm this, I can also run effectively the ifconfig command, which will return the IP address and a lot more information about my current connection. Great, so I'm currently connected, I can see my IP address, and that means that I'm able to now use MicroPip. So in order to take a look at what we're doing, we're going to download this MicroPip library that is going to just basically do a benchmarking test. If we go to the example here, we can go ahead and import upip. And again, this is really simple. Once we have that, we are ready to go ahead and start trying to download something over the internet. And for such a small device, it's pretty cool that we can just go ahead and specify this the way we would any other package manager and have it download and unpack it to our library. Now here, we're going to use the example, which is the, the basically the PyStone uh, benchmarking test. We'll see that it is able to download and install it to the slash lib library folder. And there we go, it is actually ready to go. So in order to use this, I can now just import it the same way I would any of the standard included libraries. So if I import PyStone Lomem, I can go ahead and use this as a function and it will ran, run the benchmarking test, which basically runs 500 times and reports back the relative speed that it's processing, which is not gonna be much on a little ESP. But here you go, we can see the uh, PyStone benchmark of this little microcontroller. And we wouldn't have been able to do that if we weren't able to connect to Wi-Fi and then pull down this uh, library that we then installed. Now, if you want to very, very quickly see the libraries and everything that's installed, you can just go over to the basic file operations. And if you import the UOS, you can do a list directory, which will show you all the different things that are installed. And this is just a good way to see kind of like what's residing on the ESP8266. If you're uploading a bunch of stuff or maybe things get crowded, you can just import UOS and then UOS lister. And if you don't include anything in here, it should just list the contents of the current directory. You can see there's just a boot.py and then the library that will have all of our various libraries installed. So this is just a quick way you can get up and running with all the various libraries that are available for MicroPython, even if they aren't included in the default install. MicroPython is incredibly easy to work with on the ESP32 or the ESP8266 because with a little bit of Wi-Fi connected, you can download virtually any library you want, although it won't have all the libraries necessarily that are included in the standard Python library. It only includes the one that are included in the MicroPython library, which you can find in the included article in the description. Now, another limitation to this is that you can't use the web REPL at the same time as pulling down various modules because unfortunately it's using the same radio, so you can't be connected directly to it while also pulling down things from the internet. It's just not how that works. Aside from that, MicroPip is a great way to get started installing various libraries that might be useful for a particular project. So go ahead and try it if you have a board like this and you have access to the internet. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. If you want more information about these boards or if you run into any problems while you're doing this, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because they'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.